गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज गजी मिश्रा ओके टिल नाउ टिल द लास्ट वीडियो नो वी हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश द फर्स्ट टू चैप्टर्स अकॉर्डिंग टू एनसीईआरटी ऑफ क्लास 12th ओके फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड फील्ड्स एंड देन द सेकंड चैप्टर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल एंड कैपेसिटेंस ओके आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू विल डू द एक्स NCERT questions and if you find any doubt in that you can ask me okay uh, you can put your question in the comment box I will solve it and okay uh, if needed I will contact you through WhatsApp now see uh, in those two, two chapters what we have studied we have studied about the static charge static charge means when the charge is at rest okay the study uh, of uh, charge at rest okay is called electrostatics okay that's why both the chapters together also known as electrostatics okay now we are going to study when the charge is going to move okay so what the motion of charge causes actually it causes electric current okay and that's why the name of this chapter is current electricity okay now the first topic is current electric current rather what is electric current all of you write the heading okay written now start writing the definition the amount of charge flowing through a particular a particular cross section of a conductor per unit time is called electric current okay is called electric current. full stop it is denoted by a small i oblique capital a. you can write it by small i or you can write it capital okay, no problem comma and don't write comma comma okay it is denoted by small i oblique capital i and has si unit and has si unit ampere ampere or coulomb per second okay coulomb per second full stop it is a scalar quantity it is a scalar quantity okay okay uh, it is given by it is given by i is equals to q upon t okay written this see my children this is average current which you have studied in class 10th also okay this is average current total charge flown through that cross section of a conductor and this is total time taken suppose in 12 second uh, 10 is the power uh, suppose uh, 100 coulomb charge is flowing okay so 100 coulomb is total charge and time is suppose it is flowing in 10 seconds so 10 second is the time okay so q upon t you will get the average current but if you want the current at a particular time suppose uh, you want the time current at suppose uh, fifth second okay or some at a particular moment then that is called instantaneous current okay and that instantaneous current is given by you know, it is equals to we write delta q that is small charge flow and small time okay and here we write limit limit delta t tends to zero means this time is very 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 small this time interval is very very small okay it will be such small that see time interval means what we are going to have two time okay suppose it is uh, t1 this is t2 okay this, this is called interval 
if the two these two times are very very near to each other then what will happen this interval will be very small okay now what does it means delta t is zero that means uh, tending to zero okay tending to zero means they are not actually coinciding with each other they are just next to each other next to each other means like see the number next to zero what is the number it is 0, 0.000 we keep on writing at last we must write one that is very near you know okay and it's the same way t1 is very near t2 is very near to t1 so this delta t will be very small but not zero okay so when this time is very small then what we write it we can write it i is equals to dq upon dv okay. so the rate of flow of charge okay through a particular cross section of conductor is called current okay the rate of flow of charge through a particular cross section of conductor is called current now from here what we can write can we write like this when charge is one coulomb time is one second then current is how much one ampere okay actually ampere has denoted by a okay so we can we write this okay now suppose it is told to define one ampere or Sometimes they ask, uh, define the SI unit of current. How can you define it? Put the adding, 1 ampere. Okay. 1 ampere. All right. 1 ampere like this. Okay. 1 ampere. Okay. Written the adding 1 ampere. Now start writing. When 1 coulomb of charge, when 1 coulomb of charge flows through a particular cross section of a conductor in 1 second. Comma. Then the current through that conductor is said to be one ampere. Did it? Okay. Very good. Okay. See, actually, current no, it always flows from the higher potential to lower potential. Okay, uh, and that's why you studied in class 10th no? the current in the circuit. Suppose this is circuit, okay. Here you've got the bulb, okay. So, current always flows from the positive to positive potential that is higher potential to the lower potential because here potential is positive, here potential is negative. So, which potential is positive, uh, which is higher potential? Positive potential is higher, obviously, because suppose here potential is suppose uh, uh, hmm, 2 volt plus here minus 2 so what is the potential difference potential difference is obviously you can write that is uh, 2 minus of minus 2 that is four that is potential difference okay now which is at higher potential plus 2 is higher or minus 2 is higher obviously plus 2 is higher so current always flows from higher potential to lower potential okay uh, okay now see the direction of flow of current uh, sorry electron electron always flows from the negative to positive okay because it you know it always flows opposite to the direction of electric field okay so it will go like this this is the direction of flow of electron in this way electron is to flow whereas the current current is to flow like this Now, uh, current we said it is a scalar quantity, but see current has got magnitude, suppose I is equals to uh, 5 ampere, so it has got magnitude, 5 and um, number and the unit is known as magnitude and it has got direction also, see it is going from positive terminal to the negative terminal no? or higher potential to lower potential, see it has got direction, it, it will flow like this only, it cannot come like this, okay, so that means it has got direction also. Then why it is called a scalar quantity? Uh, see, uh, because 
Suppose there are uh, two wires. This is one wire, this is the other wire. Through this wire, suppose 3 ampere of current is coming. And from this, suppose 4 ampere of current is coming. Okay? And they are perpendicular, not simply like this. Okay? Uh, they are perpendicular to each other. Okay? And the third wire is here, like this. Okay. Now, what, what happens? If you add this 3 plus 4, what you will get? 4 plus 3 becomes how much? 7 ampere. Okay. What has been found here? The current found here is 7 ampere. Okay. But vertically, if you will add them, what you will get? You must have here, see, it is something like this 3 square plus 4 square because angle is 90 degree, so cos 90 is 0. That it we are applying going to apply the triangle law of vector division a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta inside the root. So cos theta and cos 90 is 0. That's why we are writing a square plus b square only. So what we should get from here 9 plus 16 is 25. So we must get 5 ampere. Okay, but we are not getting 5 ampere, we are getting 7 ampere. That means they are getting added simply arithmetically. Okay. As they are getting added arithmetically, that means current is not following the vector algebra, it is following the simple algebra and that's why it is called the scalar quantity. Okay. So that's why the, actually the definition earlier given for vector quantities was no, that uh, a physical quantity which has magnitude and direction is called vector quantity and the physical quantity which has only magnitude as, are called scalar quantity. But, but when it came to the electric current, no, then people were bound to change the definition. Change the definition means to add one thing. What is that? See, for vector quantities, what are vector quantities? They are physical quantities which have magnitude, direction and follow the world vector algebra. Okay. And what are the scalar quantities? Those physical quantities which have only magnitude and follow the simple algebra are called scalar quantities. Okay. So, due to this current, only the definition was changed. Understood all of you? Okay. Some smaller units of current which are generally used. This is one microampere. Microampere is another smaller unit. Okay. One microampere is equal to 10 power minus 6 ampere. Okay. One milliampere. What is milli? Milli is 10 to the power minus 3. 10 to the power minus 3 ampere. Okay. So, these are the conversions for smaller units. Uh, now, after these conversions, what we are having uh, next, that is Ohm's law, which already you have studied in the last time, but again we study, okay, Ohm's law. Write the writing first. Written? Okay. Now start writing. It states that Current flowing through a conductor, current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across the conductor at constant temperature. Full stop. Now see what this statement is all about. Uh, suppose we have got a, a circuit okay in which if we will increase the potential difference the current will also increase. If we will decrease the potential difference current will also decrease. How? Suppose you are adding more number of cells. What will happen? The current in the circuit will increase. And if you decrease the number of cells the current in the circuit will, circuit will decrease. Okay. So what we get from here? From here we get I is proportional to C. Okay. Because V is the independent variable. Okay. You are adding cells to increase the potential difference. And then current is dependent on that. That's why I is proportional to V. Okay. Or we can write V is proportional to I. Okay. Because when you are increasing the potential difference, only then the current is increasing. Okay. That will be more better. Now, so what we get from here, we remove the proportionality sign, we get Ri. Okay. 
that is this okay now after this you write where r is the resistance where r is the resistance offered by the circuit to the flow of current through it full stop it remains constant for a given conductor at constant temperature okay now see as we have got v is proportional to i so what is the graph for it here we have taken in volt here we have taken i in ampere we get a graph like this okay this is the graph just draw this drawn okay now um suppose you are asked a question okay what type of question suppose there is a graph like this it is in volt and this is current in ampere like this and graphs are given like this. this is conductor a this is conductor b this is conductor c this is conductor d now the question is that which can write the write the conductors in the increasing order of their resistance in the increasing order of their resistance now how it, you will come to know that which has got more resistance see my dear children actually the slope of the line with the x axis gives you the resistance of that conductor okay now how to find that slope slope is nothing but r is equals to slope is equals to tan theta and this is theta which they are making with the x axis okay this is theta now whichever has got a smaller the smallest angle with the x axis will have a smaller value of theta so its tan theta will be lesser so its resistance will be lesser okay whichever has got the larger value of theta will have more value of tan theta so for that resistance will be more so which has got the least resistance of the resistance of conductor d is least and then resistance of conductor c is there then resistance of conductor b is there and then resistance of conductor a is there this is the increasing order of resistance understood okay now so write up this done The conductors are of two types, okay? Types of conductors. Types of conductors. First is ohmic conductor. Second is non ohmic conductor. Okay. First is ohmic conductor and second is non ohmic conductor. Okay. Conductor. Okay. Now, what are ohmic conductors? Note it down this, and then the put then put the heading ohmic conductor. Done? Okay. Now, for ohmic conductors, start writing. The conductors which follow the Ohm's law are called ohmic conductors. The conductors which follow Ohm's law are called ohmic conductors. Okay. Ohm's law means obviously potential difference is proportional to current. And the resistance remains constant. See, actually, most of our metallic conductors, no, they follow the Ohm's law like this. 
for only conduction or what might happen for the metals. Uh, they follow the Ohm's law and then they reverse the Ohm's law and then they start deviating. Okay? This deviation starts. So till here, they are following the Ohm's law. So they are Ohmic conductors. And then at higher voltage, they deviate from their nature. Okay. So that deviation we have to uh, leave. Okay. Here they are not. After this, they are not. Okay. After this, they are not. But before this, in this region, they are Ohmic. Okay. Clear? So basically what we do, we take metallic conductors as Ohmic conductors. Okay, understood. Uh, see here, resistance varies because slope changes. Okay. You can see here, with the parallel to the axis, we will draw a line at this angle and this angle. Both angles are not equal. This angle is larger, so resistance has gone up. Okay. okay. So, for example, you can write the name of the metals which are OB conductors like silver, gold, copper. Aluminium, okay. These are the uh, platinum. These are the ohmic conductors. Okay. Now put the next heading: non-ohmic conductors. Non-ohmic conductors. Non-ohmic conductors. Okay. Put the heading: non-ohmic conductors. Written heading. Okay, now start writing. The conductors which do not follow the Ohm's law, the conductors which do not follow the Ohm's law are called non ohmic conductors. Okay, are called non ohmic conductors. Full stop. For example, Diodes, transistors, triodes, etc. These are basically the semiconductor devices and they do not follow the Ohm's law. For example, for diode, I will draw the graph for you. Okay, I think you have written the example, I will draw the graph for you. It is not proportional. Okay. Here, the current is very small, very clear, and suddenly you switch up. It appears that is voltage is proportional to current. Is it like that? No. So that's why it is not only conductor. Here, the current is in. Medium and here the current is in micro. Okay. okay, so this is the graph for diodes, and diodes are not ohmic conductors, they are non ohmic conductors. Okay, you must draw this drawn. Okay. Now see how can you define one ohm? How can you define one ohm? Let us write the heading. Written. Now start writing. When one ampere of current flows through a conductor, when ampere one ampere of current flows through a conductor by uh, by applying by applying one volt of potential difference. By applying one volt of potential difference across its ends, across its ends, 
comma then the resistance of that conductor is said to be 1 ohm then the resistance of that conductor is said to be 1 ohm okay so uh, as actually si unit of resistance is ohm no so uh, it is 1 ohm now see actually ohm is what 1 ohm okay it has got symbol like this okay and this is also equal to this is we can write what because we know that d is equals to y r so from here we know that r is equals to what d by i what is the unit for potential difference it is volt what is uh, unit for current it is ampere so you can write volt per ampere okay so ohm is also volt per ampere clear written the definition of one ohm also okay now i will discuss you some symbols also how the resistance are represented what is symbol for resistance see sometimes resistance may be represented like this okay uh, sometimes they may be represented like this when the resistances are represented like this then obviously they are called uh, fixed resistances okay fixed resistance means suppose its value is 10 ohm so it will remain 10 ohm only suppose its value is 7 ohm so it will remain 7 ohm only okay it will not change you cannot change it okay so these are fixed resistances resistances or i should say resistors what are resistors which offer resistance okay now if you are uh, having like this suppose then its value can be changed okay. or you are having like this these are variable registers variable registers actually their registers can be changed okay by some movable parts by moving something some okay different types of uh, variable registers are there in the market okay whose registers can be varied according to our need from few ohms to few, suppose from 1 ohm to 20, 10 ohm or 20 ohm okay all are present over there so you can change the resistance even suppose a battery is there okay which you have connected to a circuit and battery is of 12 volt but you require only 1.5 volt okay and you want to you want you require to change the potential difference across it how to change that for that we have got potential dividers okay whose symbols are like this this is symbol for potential divider okay it can be also like this okay which works as a potential divider so these works as a these are the circuit symbols for potential divider which divides the potential and gives according to the requirement you can adjust the potential according to your requirement in the circuit okay so this is symbol for fixed resistance this is symbol these are these two are the symbols for variable resistance these two are the symbols for potential divider some more symbols i would like to talk to you okay i'm going to wrap this uh, suppose somewhere you get a symbol like this this is ammeter as you know very well okay and this is voltmeter because v is written here if you find milliammeter then you something like this if you get milli voltmeter then you will write it like this if it is microammeter then obviously at the place of m you will find mu if it is microvolt then at the place of m you will find mu okay and there is galvanometer for galvanometer this is the symbol okay or you can have a symbol like this also this is also galvanometer these two are symbols of galvanometer okay so this were the important symbols which we have discussed okay next heading is factors affecting the resistance now we are going to discuss the factors which affect the resistance of a conductor okay 
although we have already discussed in class 10th, but here it is again required. So first thing, resistance actually it is directly proportional to length of the conductor. Okay. Second thing, that means if the wire is longer, then its resistance will be more. If wire is shorter, its resistance will be lesser. Second thing, resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section. Area of cross section means, you can see this area. This is its area of cross section and this is its area of cross section. If this area of cross section is more, obviously this area is more, then this duster will be more thicker one. Okay. If this area of cross section becomes less, then this duster will become thinner one. Okay. So area of cross section decides the thickness of the wire. Okay. So if wire is more thicker, then A will be more and so resistance will be less. Okay. If area is lesser, that means wire is thinner, then resistance will be high. Got it? Okay. Third thing, it depends on the nature of material. Depends on nature of material. Okay. That is we can write R is proportional to rho. Okay. Rho is resistivity, which you have studied in class 10. What other factors it depends on? <coughs> Resistance, temperature. Resistance increases with temperature and decreases the temperature. So it depends on temperature. Okay. How it depends on temperature? That I will tell you. Okay. You have to worry. Okay. See, the resistance depends on temperature in this way. This is the resistance at initial temperature. Okay. This is the resistance of the same conductor at temperature capital T. Okay. This is 1, this is alpha and this is delta T. Delta T is what? Let me tell you what is delta T. Suppose at temperature T naught. The resistance was how much? It was R0. At temperature T, the resistance became RT. Okay. Became RT. Okay. So, what is delta T? Delta T is nothing but it is T minus T0. Clear? So, it is change in temperature. More the change in temperature, more the resistance will increase. At the same time, you have got alpha. What is alpha? It is called... Temperature coefficient of resistance. Okay. Temperature coefficient of resistance. Clear? This temperature coefficient, if it is positive, then what will happen? The resistance will increase with temperature. Okay. So this temperature coefficient is actually positive for conductors. Clear? The temperature coefficient is positive for conductors. So for conductors, resistance increases with increasing temperature. Okay? But my dear children, for semiconductors, the coefficient of resistance, temperature coefficient of resistance is negative. When it will become negative, then what will happen? As the temperature rises, the larger value gets subtracted from 1. Okay? So at larger value will, will get subtracted from 1 you will have left with a small value that is less than 1 and when you multiply something with less than 1 then its value gets reduced like like suppose you are multiplying 10 by 0. 0.5 how much it will get 5 so 5 is less than 10 no so value of 10 has been reduced to 5 okay so in that way the resistance decreases okay so in case of semi right in say case of semiconductors the temperature coefficient of resistance that is alpha is negative and therefore the resistance decreases with increasing temperature clear okay now let's come back to this factors affecting what we get by combining this one two three four is not appearing in that why that i will tell you later don't worry because four is included in third 
So what we get? R is equal to rho L by E. That we are very familiar about it. Okay? So this is very important expression. Now, what about this resistivity? What is resistivity? Okay. Now start writing. When a conductor of unit length and unit area of cross section when a conductor of unit length and unit area of cross section is connected in a circuit comma then whatever resistance it is offering whatever resistance it is offering is called its resistivity is called its resistivity okay. full stop it is the property of the material it is the property of the material that means unless you are not going to change the material it will not change full stop it its value depends on temperature now see again this resistivity also depends on temperature in the same fashion. 1 plus alpha delta T. Here alpha is called temperature coefficient. It is called temperature coefficient of resistivity. Okay. So what you have seen in Ohm's law temperature was not there. In sorry, not Ohm's law. In this temperature is not there. What do you think? It is there. It is included in this rho. Okay. Because rho will change according to the temperature. When rho will change, obviously resistance is also changing. That's why we need not to include the temperature separately. Got it? Okay. Now again you write after this. For conductors, especially the metallic conductors, alpha is positive. Comma. Therefore, resistivity increases with increase in temperature. Full stop. Now again you write. For semiconductors, alpha is negative, comma. Therefore, resistivity decreases with, with increase in temperature. Okay. Okay. See what are, what is the SI unit of rho from here? If you take this all the things this side, what you will get? You can get rho is equal to A will get multiplied R into A by L. So R is ohm, okay. A is meter square and L is meter. So meter and the square you can cancel out. What will you get? You will get ohm meter. So ohm meter is the SI unit for resistivity. Okay. Ohm meter is the SI unit for resistivity. Clear? That's all for this video. Okay, thank you children. Uh, in the next video, again I will come up with the remaining topics. Till then, keep on studying. Take care of yourself. Okay, and family also in this hard time. That's all. Bye-bye and take care.